The question of the mechitza, of the separation between men and women in prayer, um, is certainly one that arises uh, much in our day. And the peculiar thing is that until the modern era, it almost never rose for the simple reason that most other religions and peoples also separated men and women. Uh, Islam separates men and women, and most of Christendom separated men and women also. Indeed, there were some in the medieval period who Christians who wrote that the Jews are better than us because we only separate men and women in two different areas. The Jews have a physical partition. Uh, so, in a sense, they actually felt uh, that, that, that uh, perhaps uh, Jewish law being more stringent was better. In the modern period, especially in the 18th century, um, when people begin to go out for work and there is more of a separation of families instead of the family as a whole spending its time providing for its needs, the man goes out to work, the woman uh, works in the home, there is great social concern about the family as a unit. And um, especially, but not only in the United States, we begin to see churches move towards family seating. And the word is significant. They always called it family seating. The idea was religion will protect the family. And eventually, out of that grew an American religious principle, oft articulated, the family that prays together stays together. And suddenly, Jews felt um, uh, that, that their mode of prayer was different from that of their neighbors. Now, um, some people argued uh, that the solution uh, was to bring um, a women down from balconies where most women were and uh, to have a kind of uh, separation on a single floor. And uh, that happens in some places. Uh, and indeed, the, that's what um, uh, some Reformed Jews in Germany advocate. The most famous is a rabbi named David Einhorn. And the reason they did so was because that's exactly what the German Lutherans did. And German Lutheran churches well into the 20th century, men on one side, women on the other, we might call it separate but equal seating. But that, of course, didn't solve the family problem. And um, so we begin to see um, uh, uh, synagogues beginning already in the 18th 50s move towards family seating, sometimes because in America it became common for synagogues to purchase church property. Uh, Christians moved out, Jews moved in. In Europe, it almost never happened that a synagogue bought a church because that would have led to pogroms. But in America, there's been the sense that uh, religious property is interchangeable. Um, so the first case of, of mixed seating is in Albany, um, and they buy a, a church. The church has mixed pews, actually closed-end pews. They don't have any more money. They've spent all the money on the purchase. And they say, good, the family will sit together. And that's how it begins, almost as an afterthought. But very rapidly, there is a debate over this issue. Uh, understandably, um, uh, there were women who very much liked the idea, uh, either of family seating or separate, but equal seating, they didn't want to be far removed. What's extremely interesting in America, in Orthodox synagogues, 
is that even before you had family seating, you see that women were coming to synagogue, which is not so common um, in Europe, either among Ashkenazim or Sephardim. In the Sephardic world, women often came to synagogue twice a year, on Purim uh, because of Esther and on Yom Kippur. And that's why when you go and visit old historic synagogues, often the women's section is tiny and the men's section is very large. And you wonder, well, what kind of a community had so few women and so many men? How is that possible? Biologically, it's impossible. And the answer is women didn't come very much, didn't need room. But in America, Christian women did go to church and therefore... Jewish women felt, you know, we want to be respected as well. And we see Jewish women going to shul. The rabbis are quite happy about this. And you begin to see the Ezrat Nashim, the women's sections, getting bigger and bigger. So, for example, anyone who goes to the famous Eldridge Street Synagogue in the Lower East Side will see an enormous women's section because... uh, a lot of those women wanted to go to synagogue and they made provisions for them. Um, even uh, earlier than that, uh, at the Spanish and Portuguese synagogue, if you begin to count the seats in the women's section, you'll find that they grow and grow in number to accommodate a growing number of women Uh, who felt that a woman's place was actually in the synagogue and who came more often. But in all of those cases, men and women continued to sit apart. Um, uh, But as I say, um, Jews uh, sometimes were criticized by their neighbors for not praying as a family, sometimes were criticized for mistreating women, so to speak. Why do you put them uh, up there in uh, a cage, one anti-Semite wrote. Um, And uh, in response to that, there became more and more support for family seating. Um, uh, By uh, uh, the 1880s, almost all Reform congregations had moved to family seating, And um, in the 20th century, mixed seating becomes the marker that differentiates orthodoxy from the other branches of Judaism. Orthodoxy maintains separate seating. Other branches of Judaism, conservative movement, adopt mixed seating. And it becomes uh, a visible marker. You walk into a synagogue, you know at once, is this an Orthodox synagogue? Is it not an Orthodox synagogue? By whether or not it has uh, mixed seating or separate seating. Um, The difference between um, uh, putting women in the balcony or right, left, front, back, those tended not to be ideological, but often very practical, uh, depending on uh, architecture. So, And you have some very unusual uh, synagogues. So, for example, the so-called Old Vilna Shul in Boston, uh, one of the last uh, remaining old synagogues uh, from the beginning of the 20th century, was a rather strange lot. And and the Ezrat Nashim, the women's section, is actually sloping, a uh, very unusual uh, um, uh, way. But um, the question in the United States, and increasingly later in Europe, is separate seating or mixed seating. To proponents of mixed seating, this is support for the family. To to proponents of separate seating, this is the Jewish way of prayer that is different from the non-Jewish way, from our neighbors. We want to be different uh, from our neighbors, even if um, they look down upon us. And that beca- and that, that's really uh, where the debate is um, uh, to this day. 
If you liked that video, hit the subscribe button and notification bell below for hours of the best Jewish content online.